everyone, and welcome to our second podcast for the 2021 year. Um, we're excited to be in the new year, and it's still awkward to say 2021, but um, I am so pleased today that Micah Anderson um, agreed to join us on our podcast today as we are all kind of gearing up for the gardening season again. Um, Micah Anderson is an extension educator at Langston University in the area of horticulture. Um, but he has a career in horticulture that we'll get into a little bit more. Um, but first of all, Micah, thank you for joining us today. Yes, thank you, Casey, for inviting me. And I'm happy to be here, and uh, it's great. Uh, it's just great to be here and uh, driving up in the fog, but uh, everything, is, I made it safely. It, good. It was, it was very foggy this morning, coming from the north, too, as well. So, um, you know, it's, it's nice kind of feeling like those spring mornings are starting to come around a little bit, even though it's still got some chill in the air. We're all getting antsy to get out in the garden. Oh, um, yeah. And I know you are, too. And we're going to get into kind of what all we need to be doing in the garden and what you're doing currently. Um, but let's talk a little bit first about your history, because I know you're a regular on our show. Um, and people always enjoy the advice and expertise that you bring to the show. So we, we've known each other for a few years now, actually. Yeah, it's been, a, uh, I think I knew you when you got your first job, I believe. <laughs> yeah. uh, we were really excited to, uh, to have uh, an horticulturist in our county, in, uh, in Canadian County. And so, yeah, uh, 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 so I've been able to keep up with you this whole time since you got married and got two kids now and everything. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, I was uh, born in uh, Muskogee County. Uh, I went to school in Haskell. And, uh, but uh, uh, and back in, in uh, those days, uh, before the laws changed, uh, kids could be born by midwives. And so uh, actually my grandmother delivered me and I was born at the, in the farmhouse where, where, uh, where I grew up. Uh, and so, uh, and then we, uh, my dad um, was a farmer. Um, my mother's dad was a farmer. Uh, my dad's dad came from Louisiana and uh, settled in Snake Creek, just outside of Bigsby. And my, uh, my mom's dad came from Mississippi, and uh, he eventually settled right around Haskell, and that's where, where uh, he actually mentored my dad because my dad's dad passed away when he was only about 11 years old. And so uh, before, before and after my dad married my mom, then my grandfather ment mentored him. Uh, they started out with mules, and then they uh, they bought a farm oil tractor, and that was like change. That really, I mean, that really changed things. They were able to uh, farm. I don't know, probably ten times what they were, because Grandpa actually went out and he uh, he said, you know, just because we got this tractor, we're not going to keep quit using the mule, <laughs> and so he. Uh, he, he uh, plowed and while my dad was young and was in, eager to get on the tractor. And uh, he went to a corner and plowed, and my dad plowed this big old field and then met him halfway in the corner. And then that was the last time my grandpa used the mule. <laughs> he was like, I still got to go home and feed these animals. I got to groom them, uh, you know, and take do all this management. All we got to do in this tractor is put it up with gas and change the oil. And turn it off for the day, right? <laughs> That's it. So, Micah, that's a, you know a lot about your family history and the farming that they've done in that area. Um, and, and I had the privilege last year, you did a presentation um, from the perspective of your dad, actually, and just yeah. kind of the history of farming. Are you going to be doing that again anytime soon? Or Well, you know, uh, next month is Black History Month. Uh, that's, very, that's a good possibility. Uh, somebody had mentioned that. Uh, so... Uh, uh, yeah, that, I mean, that's very definite possibility. Yeah, I didn't know you were the, quite the actor as well. Like, you step into the character role of your dad and kind of talk about the olden days. And <laughs> Well, you know, I, it was, I, I, uh, I, I, w I watched somebody else do it, uh, and they were, they were de uh, demonstrating their dad or mom or whatever in a black history role, and, uh, and I think, you know, I'm, I'm really scared, but I think I could do it. And so I, I just... I took off, and, and everybody seemed to love it. You did a fantastic job, <laughs> and you bring a lot of memorabilia that you have, um, some records and things like that as well. Yeah, yeah, and it was because uh, by my dad, uh, you know, 
they, uh, uh, you know, like I was born in that house, and so they lived there for years, and my mom kept stuff in a tin box. And uh, you could tell, uh, you know, things that were important. And so, uh, you know, a lot of this stuff, we didn't even know they were there until uh, until they pass, had passed on. Or, And my, my, my brother was the power attorney, and so he, I started looking through this box and started finding all these different things where I was picking cotton back in 1965, and, and, uh, and where he bought his first tractor and he bought his first truck and stuff. That was, uh, so it was, it was very interesting to me to be able to, be able to put stuff together. And I realized that uh, my mom and dad was really on one accord. They, would, they had really decided that, when they, that they were gonna be farmers and they were gonna really make it go. And, and so he, he actually done it and never worked a public job. Just wow. always just uh, uh, lived off the soil and stuff like that. We had a hay baling business, but uh, you know, basically just farming and, and baling hay and stuff like that. Yeah, and I remember you were mentioning at one point you, there was a letter um, asking him to be on a council for the extension office. Um, and and here now you are a state extension educator. Right? What do you think about that? that? What do you think he would think about that? That was that was, it was, that was an amazing letter. Uh, and, and it was funny because my brother is like, I mean, did you realize what this is? I mean, he never paid really any attention. And uh, and and I'm like, yeah, out here I'm doing this and I'm getting paid. He 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 was actually doing what I'm doing, but you know, just kind of volunteer. And uh, they had asked him to come to Muskogee. To a meeting because uh, at that time there was over 4,000 uh, black families living in the rural area between Muskogee and Omuggy. Well, of course, they were referring to Muskogee County, and it, there really is, it was a lot of black families, and there was a lot of churches. And uh, so he, uh, uh, they asked him to come and, and, uh, and be a leader. And so I thought that was very really awesome, and he never said anything about it, but I found we found the letter in, in that box. Uh, but you know, it, it, it was, it was amazing, an amazing community. Uh, when you think about uh, uh, some of the people in the audience may have heard of uh, Wayman Tisdale, and uh, he played basketball as one of the one of the very top stars that ever played for OU. Uh, but uh, you know, I remember when he when they came to Oklahoma, they lived, they were from Fort Worth, and so they came to uh, to pastor one of the black churches. Uh, his dad did, and so uh, and uh, he. And at, in, as we speak now, his dad's name is on one of the highways there in Tulsa, L.L. Tildale. Sometimes when I drive up there, it's nervous because it makes me nervous because they have actually eaten at our table at the farmhouse where I was born. And, uh, and, and when they got here, you know, they were, you know, like anybody just moving and not had a lot of money. The church wasn't the, the biggest church. And so the, my dad gave them a half of a cow. And so... Feel real responsible for Wayman being so for his success. <laughs> <laughs> you helped originally feed him, and get him established. Yeah, because it was it was actually three boys, and they were you know they ate a lot. So yeah. <laughs> but, well, uh, well, and you come from a big family, also is that that is how? that is correct. Uh, we was uh, it was uh, ten of us that grew that grew up. Uh, my mom actually had eleven kids, and uh, uh, my brother just older than me, three years older than me, and then there was one. Kid, there was a break between him and my sister. Uh, all my sisters are older than I am, but uh, we had one brother that died, <laughs> and and uh, uh, so that she, my mom went to, to a doctor or whatever, and they told her, well, you know, I don't know for whatever reason, told her, you know, maybe not to have any more kids, and I wasn't born yet, <laughs> and so. <laughs> well, thank goodness she didn't <laughs> listen, right? <laughs> exactly, and so yeah, she was a very spiritual person and. And, uh, and and we, we, we actually look back on it. It was the same year that my uh, my grandfather died, and it was he had a kind of uh, it kind of a uh, immediate type of kind of deal. And he went to the hospital, and he didn't make it back out. And they were real close. And we you know we re really feel that you know that had a lot to do with that. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, but, so. So let's fast forward a little bit. You came into my life one day, walked into the extension office in Canadian County, and this is what I love about extension, because you just never know who's going to walk in your door. <laughs> and you were asking me for some gardening advice, and I was like, you work at the Department of Ag. Why am I going to help you? You, <laughs> you should know <laughs> more than I do. <laughs> so I had just started, and, you know. You, you yeah, 
that you, newbie experience. You don't. You have butterflies. You don't know all the answers. So. Well, we was excited to to, to have the horticulturists in our county, and <laughs> and uh, uh, it, 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 you know, back in back in those days, uh, you know, two thousand seven, whatever that was. That uh, you know, it was uh, you know, we had Tracy over in Cleveland County, and then yeah. we had uh, Samantha in, in Oklahoma City County. It was like, wow, this is kind of a little buzz going on here <laughs> with these young young ladies, these young horticulturists, and. You know, because I, you know, I knew about the, you know, the, the extension offices, but they usually had to do with the big agriculture, and uh, and uh, and I wanted, to, I was more focused on fruits and vegetables, even though my dad did do commodities and stuff like that. But the, you know, when I moved to Piedmont in Piedmont, Oklahoma, uh, uh, yeah, I only got five acres. Well, I mean, I wanted to grow food, and so that's one of my, that's been my thing that I've always concentrated on is to help people grow food to eat and. And the, and the reason I got into it, the reason I bought that place was, uh, it was like my son was get he was around junior high, and I'm like, this is not right. I I got to show him something about growing, how to grow stuff, and so I I got into it, and then it just led from one thing to another. I uh, I had to go to uh, the Piedmont had a co-op, but uh, Yukon also had one, but one of Piedmont only had stuff for the big farmers. But in Yukon, they had a little section with seeds, garden seeds and watermelons and different things like that. And so I, I got to go in there and I met the, uh, the manager. His name was Arlen Day. And, uh, and so he would, uh, he actually found out that I fixed cars and, and he had some trucks that needed some work on it. And he had my number and everything. And, and I would do that from time to time. And, and so one day uh, he, got, he called me and uh, I didn't even know the co-op had closed down in, in Yukon. And I thought, okay, he wants me to fix a car or something. And so uh, at the time, I didn't really have a, a place. And so a shop or whatever, and I thought not to call him back. And then I went on to call him back, and he was working at the ag department. Uh -huh. And so he, uh, he was like, Michael, we need somewhere to put one more garden. And, uh, and so I was like, I, with the, the place that we had had, we didn't have it anymore, and I was like, oh, I, I don't, uh, I don't, I can't do it. We can't do it." And he was, he kept talking to me, and so I, I went down to my dad's place because my dad was still living at the time. We put it in there, and then the young man that was uh, putting it in, it was uh, trying to transfer out of that department, and so I called all and I said, "All and uh, do you think I might be? It might be a deal where I could uh, maybe apply for this job." He said, "You would be the perfect person." I'm like, really? <laughs> and so, so I did, and I, I went and talked to uh, the lady that was over it. Her name was, uh, uh, well, let's see here, Carol Beach. And she was, she was over uh, the transportation along with being over this, this horticulture area, the plastic culture. And so before I got the job, I wound up fixing two trucks for the Department of Ag. <laughs> And so that's, that's quite an interview <laughs> process. <laughs> and so and they didn't uh, when I first started talking, they didn't really they didn't want to put me on right then because it was the summertime. They had put the gardens in and they wanted to wait till the fall and then maybe like, you know, try to have me to check them out and stuff. And, and so let me interject it real quick. So this is the plastic culture program was already going. Um, and is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Actually, it, actually, it was started by a guy named Willard Tillman. And he was he was ahead of me, and and uh, then he he was gone, and then uh, this young man was kind of working with him, and then he transferred, and then uh, they brought me in. And so that through that plastic culture program, what people would do, or what the program was responsible for doing, was installing gardens yeah. for market well, growers. Yeah, exactly. What we were doing was we, we were putting in gardens from a quarter of an acre up to an acre. So we had, you know, because we wanted to make some limitations because there were some people that they, they wanted the whole full acre, and <laughs> if they would have been two acres, they'd have wanted that. Yeah. So, but what I really found out was the people that had the quarter acre and the, the half acre, it was a lot of times done better because it was a, it was more manageable. manageable. Mm -hmm. But uh, but it was a it was a great program that uh, went for um, oh, 12 years that we, we, we did that there at the Department of Ag. And, uh, and then we also managed the garden there in the front of the ag department. Uh, and uh, it, it became real popular, and we still 
even through our length and extension, we still manage that with the uh, Department of Ag. So. Yeah, and that's so neat to go down to, uh, you know, around our capital to the building of the Department of Ag and to see these agriculture and uh, horticulture crops being grown right in the front yard of this building um, instead of your typical, uh, you know, capital boxwoods and things like that. Yeah. And showcasing was, our agronomy. Yeah, and it was actually uh, part of a, it was actually originally like some flowers and scrubs and stuff like that uh -huh. and so we had we took all that stuff out and and uh so you know the, the, it was like oh we, we got people to take care of this and i'm like okay so, and so it but it worked out we actually had people that came out of guard out of the building that volunteered and uh in different times and some of the managers would let them do that and it was really uh it was really uh it really helped them a lot of the people they'd come out and in uh, uh, working the soil, because I think when you work in the soil, it does something to you. It just connects you back to nature and stuff. And so there was a lot of people that uh, uh, that came out and helped, and it it it, it went really well. And uh, so that was a uh, it was it was a great program. I uh, I uh, got an email from a uh, one of the gardeners, and and what's so neat about it being at Langston, I still can actually take these people further sometimes. And uh, this guy was like, "Look what you did, Michael, with this plastic culture program." He uh, he he grows okra, and he calls it heavy hitter, and he's shipping the seeds all over the world. And he he started this when he was on my program. And he would he would only harvest the okra off the stalks that had the most okra on it. Huh? And so now he's he's got this line of okra that just produces like crazy, and you don't want to plant it very thick because it bushes out and it puts on so much okra. And uh, Baker Creek, as uh, he he gave them so many seeds this this last time, and they want more, and he, so he's now looking for some kind of thrasher, but they gave him a bonus check. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> so that was amazing to hear that story, and uh, so we're gonna try to see what we can do to help him move move forward in that. Well, that's and I want to take a moment to just um, give a nod to all the people listening to us or watching us on Facebook, real quick. Uh, hello to Eric and Gita, or is that Gre Greta? Gita um, out there. So thank you guys for watching us. And feel free to stop by or drive by the Department of Ag and check out that garden. Um, it's still going strong, and Micah still is uh, critical in implementing that every year. He's, his skills are valuable still down there, even though he's at Langston. So, um, and, and you're living in Piedmont, so you're still kind of all over the central Oklahoma area. Yeah, uh, yeah. You were saying, I mean, through that plasticulture program, you really made a network of followers, <laughs> farmers, and yeah, you're right. It it it, uh, it was it was really it was hard work at times because you know when I would go out to do a garden, uh, whether it was a quarter of an acre or an acre, I wanted to try to finish that garden because I didn't want to have to drive all the way back there, and I usually put them in a tractor, but. Uh, and some it was really enjoyable because I even went out into the Panhandle, uh -huh. and uh, uh, I forget the name of the town. It's out past Garvin, and uh, and then this lady comes up to me and while I'm putting this garden in, she says, "I want one of these gardens. I live west of here." I'm like, "Are you in Oklahoma?" I'm and uh, and uh, she was like, "Yeah, but you can see New Mexico and and Colorado from my house." <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so yeah, it was it it was really interesting. I got to go to play and. And I was sitting at the late the people's table, and they was like, "Yeah, we're closer to uh, uh, Denver and Austin." I, I, they named like three or four capitals they were closer to than they were to Oklahoma City. Wow! And I, and I also want to mention what plasticulture is. If people aren't familiar with that, that's a method of laying plastic down. Um, and you used to provide two different ways of doing that: either white or black, um, depending on whether. If you did black, and correct me if I'm wrong, if you did black, then it absorbed more of that heat and, and allowed that soil to warm up faster. But if you were wanting to grow um, more hot season, warm season crops in cooler season, or in cooler soil temperatures, then you would put the white so it kind of reflected some of that heat. Yeah, yeah. If it was basically what I've learned over the years, if, if you're planting early, you want to go with the black. Okay. But if you get toward the in the summer and you could still grow like I planted all the way up into the first of July planted watermelons and still in the, the white still warms a little bit but not nearly as much 
and so it's not as strenuous on the plants if you're planting late in the summer. So the white was good for that. And then one time we we may even do some experiments uh, with some other colors. We done some red one time and and uh, supposed to be really good for tomatoes and stuff like that. Yeah, it's supposed to help with flower production and yeah. production, I believe. So uh, yeah. there there is some ongoing research with that, just within greenhouses and that sort of stuff as well. Um, hello to Pat Calvin in Nebraska. You got a fan in Nebraska <laughs> listening, so <laughs> we're we're international now, well, okay. national at least. <laughs> so, um, Micah, let's talk a little bit about uh, what you're doing in your garden. And I have to brag on you because you've spoiled me. Uh, every season, I get usually I don't think I got one this year really? a watermelon from you, yeah. and I ha cannot buy a watermelon as good as the ones that you grow. Yeah, you know, I, we did. I was, I thought about you this year, and we was, I was, I really had good sales this year, but I, we was disconnected because of the, the virus and stuff. But, um, but yeah, you know, it, it's funny. You know, like I say, I don't, I, I actually don't have a degree in horticulture. I wish I did, uh, but we learned a lot of stuff growing up as a kid. We always had a watermelon patch, and uh, we learned that if you grow watermelons in the same place more than two years then the sweetness go down we wanted the sweetness to be very top huh. and so we would always move to a different place every year and we had we had 160 200 acres you know so we had different places we could plant and and we we also learned that you know, on brand new ground watermelon was really done well and so uh uh yeah so yeah i that's something that i i grow a lot uh, i like to grow every year i don't like to grow a lot of them but i grow them every year actually uh, I actually meant uh, uh, it kind of educated a guy this year uh, in Piedmont that had like oh, I think he must have had 25 acres and uh, he done really well and he done it with plastic culture and stuff and so I was able to kind of advise him on some on stuff and he he and so that's like 10 times the size of my my garden because mine because I'm I'm trying to work I'm working the job and I'm trying to you know sell a little bit at, at the deal and actually uh, one of the things that I'm growing more of is cantaloupe uh, because uh, that's it's really hard to get a sweet cantaloupe in the store because they don't hold very long mm -hmm. and so for market gardeners if you get the right variety uh, you can you can get you can take it to the market and it, you know you make sure people cut it right away or, you know within the next day or so they, they you that's something that you can take to the market that you, they just can't get in the store mm -hmm. and there's uh, certain varieties that that have higher sweetness than others, and so the the big commercial growers they buy the ones that don't have as much sweetness because they hold longer, and so I I go with the ones that have the, the most sugar in. Is them. it because the sugar starts the fermenting process yeah. and starts obviously yeah breaking them down probably. yeah because uh, I uh, I we just this we we're gonna do a uh, a cantaloupe variety trial this year. Um, I'm working with Dr. Tracy Patton on that. Because uh, one of the one of the places we were getting our seeds from was uh, uh, in Texas. Um, oh, I, I can't think of the name of the company right now. But uh, some the watermelons I told I gave you last, the year before last. We can't get those seeds now. We can't get some of the cantaloupe seeds, mm -hmm. and so uh, we're going to try to see if we can figure out some new uh, varieties from Johnny's or some of the companies that we know is going to be around. Okay. Stuff. Yeah, you you grew some interesting varieties, and I th we had one day out there we were picking some and weighing them and we were trying to guess the weight on them. And you had some, <laughs> I think we had a thirty pound one, fifty pound one. I, I can't remember, but it was yeah, it was heavy. <laughs> yeah, we had we had one we had one that was uh, uh thirty some pounds uh, that that uh, year before last. Yeah, yeah. But uh, in in a few years back. Uh, uh, some of my growers have some black diamonds, and and one and they have some that grew that grew up to seventy pounds, and we used to grow them like that when I was a kid all the time. But uh, it's an heirloom, and the heirlooms are affected by the weather more, and so if you don't have that perfect weather conditions, you they just right. don't do well. So I don't grow too many of them because they really take a lot of space and energy. Right. And so I usually go with the hybrids, and they can handle those. Uh, conditions the different weather conditions and a lot of people uh, ask me why and because you know I, when I think about it it's like my grandfather them you know, uh, they uh, they use mules 
which is a hybrid animal. <clears throat> it's a cross between a horse and a donkey. Mm-hmm. But it's big like a horse, but it eats like a donkey. And it's not, it's, uh, it's low maintenance like a donkey. How horse is high maintenance. Uh, you know, they have to eat a lot and you have to do more, more to take care of them. So that's why they would use those. And they were strong. And then they won't hurt themselves. Uh, where, you know, a horse, if you, you, you have to manage his, his time of working because he, he could hurt himself, yeah. overwork himself. Yeah. And so, but the, uh, I noticed that's the same way with the hybrid seeds, that the hybrid plants, is that a lot of times they'll do better in our, in our up and down conditions and stuff. They manage that well in, a, in more consistently sweet and stuff like that. You get the best quality of both yeah. parents. Yeah. 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 So, um, we also want to give a shout out to uh, your wife because Micah is a package deal. And <laughs> when I when I uh, met Micah, I soon met his wife Barbara um, and his daughter Monica as well. And so I'm sure they're listening, and we just want to say hi to them as well. Um, so yeah, it's so. If you've so, ever met Barbara, you know Barbara. <laughs> so that leads into another story. Hello, Barbara and Monica, my wife and daughter. So, but. Uh, that leads, so when, when when you met, you was trying to talk me into getting this a master gardener program. I was, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was trying to figure out, how can I do this? How can I do this? And I, you know, I'm going out all the time with my truck, putting gardens in and stuff. And, and so my wife was, uh, had some extra time and I finally talked her into it. And she goes over there and starts going to the master gardener, her and my, Monica, and, uh, and, and my daughter being handicapped and we was glad that, you know, Casey was able to to let her come with her. That was a blessing in, within itself. Mm-hmm. But uh, she goes over there and starts to be in, and then she winds up being the president. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it, so, but that was a great experience. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, the uh, in uh, math, a lot of times when I'm I'm thinking about stuff, and somebody else we'll be at church, and somebody will ask me about their backyard or something, and I'm trying to think. And, she said, well, did they get a soil test? <laughs> and I said, yeah, you know what? That's what the first thing they need to do, you know? <laughs> and, uh, so, but sometimes she had to keep me on track there. Well, that's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> and she's definitely the woman to do it. So, <laughs> um, We also want to say hello to Rochelle that is listening um, as well. So thank you for joining us, Rochelle. And if you guys, as a reminder, if any questions, feel free to put those in the comments. Is and that we'll... Rochelle King? Uh, Rochelle. I, I missed her last name. Okay, that's fair. Um, so if, do you have a last name on Rochelle? Uh, Rogers. Oh, okay. So. But it, uh, also, we, we at some point we can talk about the, the, the trip to Israel. Yeah, let's go ahead and get into okay. that. So you had the opportunity when you were at um, the Department of Ag to go to Israel, mm. which a lot of people might not realize has a lot of horticulture production going on there. So l- yeah. tell us a little bit about your experience there. Okay, well, let me let me uh, go back before, the, from my trip before, I went to Florida several times. Okay. And so then I, I realized that most of the production where they're growing fruits and vegetables for our grocery stores is grown in plastic culture, mm-hmm. pretty much. And then I, uh, they had this, this Kubota tractor. It was the neatest tractor that the, like wheels, like I don't know how, they were really tall and it, you had to climb up in it and it was to get over top of tomato rolls and stuff. And uh, I thought, you know, we'll, we'll never see this in Oklahoma. And lo and behold, my friend, uh, Joe Tierney and Bigsby bought one. <laughs> <laughs> and so I haven't got up there to see it yet, but I, I'm going to have to get up there and see it. But uh, so I went several times to Florida and that was a really great trip. But uh, but this uh, I, I eventually got to go to Israel and uh, that was uh, really amazing. I had never been out of the United States before. And so I'm flying over there and I'm I'm sit I'm you know I'm I, I'm probably different from most people. I'm sitting there watching how many miles an hour we're going. It's like thirteen hundred something miles an hour, you know. And and uh, uh and this uh, I think it was an Israeli pilot. And when we landed, he landed this plane so soft. And I've been on other planes before, and it was just it was amazing how he landed this plane. Everybody just started clapping when we landed. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but and then on the way back, uh, we were. It was only going 1,200 and some miles. I'm like, what's the deal? Then I realized that the earth is turning and we were going against the turn of the earth. 
And so it, we actually got back quicker, but at going a slower speed. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that was very inter- amazing to me to see, to look at that. But we, uh, 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 but when we got over there, uh, it was a big conference that we went to, and then we went out on a farm tour. And uh, uh, for people that don't know, Israel is really, uh, they grow all their own food and export some, uh, where we actually have to import some of our food from Mexico and some other places. Uh, but uh, we went to the, uh, oh, the museum, the Holocaustus, the Holocaust Museum. Mm. It was, uh, some people can't hardly make it through there. It's so, it's so dramatic. But uh, it was very interesting to go through that. And that's what caused them to come back uh, after Hitler was trying to destroy them to, to realize that they need to be self-sufficient. And so they, they, they started these uh, uh, different little groups. Of, it's, uh, 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 and I, I forget the name of them, but it's like a, uh, everybody's in this, in this one uh, group, but nobody owns anything, but everybody owns everything. They have cars when you can get ready to go to town, they farm. And they grow fruits and vegetables, and and we was there. And they had uh, these uh, 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 palm trees, and they, they were harvesting dates. Mm-hmm. And they have this big tall thing that go up there. And they actually had, it's their male trees and female trees. And so they only had a few fit male trees, and they would use these big cranes or whatever to pollinate all the male female trees. And so that was that was a very interesting thing. Uh, and the, they grow a lot more horticulture food crops than we do here in Oklahoma. And they, they use drip irrigation, which is what I use. And uh, uh, actually the company that I was using the drip tape from was actually from Israel, and I didn't know that at the time. And, is that uh, Netafin? Yeah, Netafin was one, but we were using another one. It was from Israel, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, Netafin, I've used it. I don't, I don't like it as much as some of the other ones, like Chafin and some. Uh, it's really good, but you really have to filter it well. Uh, it's it. I compare it to, um, you know, a Mercedes Benz or Cadillac, and and I'm like, I'm working with farmers. We need a Chevrolet. <laughs> you know, if it gets a little bit of something through there, it still works. Okay. And like Netafilm, man, it would stop if it stops up, and then we try to blow. I mean, it would just bust for you yeah. to get anything through it. So it was a, but that was, uh, so the yeah, the intro trip was a. Uh, it was a great experience, uh, and we went to the farmer's market there in uh, Jerusalem. So you were seeing tropical produce, and like, tell yeah. Us, tell us, you know, you mentioned date palms. Um, obviously, we don't grow those here. Uh, so what other produce were you seeing? Yeah, there was. Uh, um, well, I mean, you see, there was watermelons, and and uh, uh, they were growing pretty much everything under these uh, houses, but they wasn't plastic. It was netting. The netting. Uh, kept help some of the shade, you know, because it was so much. I, it was, it was, I guess it's kind of a desert, yeah. And so they would uh, they would use uh, different colors of netting to shade, and they were growing tomatoes and peppers and all that kind of stuff in those. Uh, but there was some other tropical stuff. I can't remember exactly what all it was. Um, well, olives. Mm-hmm. I seen the olive tree. Then, uh, so yeah, the one the place that I uh, that was very that really touched me being. Being a, uh, growing up in church or uh, having a spiritual background and all was well, the Garden of Gethsemane, and so you know, I you know, I wonder, you know what what what's growing there? Well, it was olive trees. It was pretty amazing, <laughs> wow. uh, and not only that, it was like they were old, and they don't know how old they are, but they were like new trees growing out of old trees. Wow! And uh, and I thought, you know, this is what. Uh, uh, Jesus done for us. He was like, he came and gave us a chance for new life. And so these new trees were growing out of these old trees. And it just, I just, I could have just stayed there for, <laughs> for a couple, <laughs> for maybe a couple of days or whatever, but they had, we had to keep moving. I bet, I bet. It was, a, it was an experience for you for sure, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about your current position. So you were with ODAF for uh, several years and then, uh, was it been three years now you've been with Langston? Yeah, it's almost three years. So yeah. let's talk a little bit about what you're doing now with your role in Langston. And I know you've done several 
presentations, I think, related to nutrition um, with, with horticulture crops and different uh, benefits that they give you as far as health goes and stuff, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, there was some, uh, I mean, I've been, some people have asked me some questions and I started checking things out and actually I realized that the goody of the watermelon seed is really, really, is the healthiest part of the watermelon. The what part of the this? goody, like the seed, but uh -huh. the inside you have to bust it open and oh, get the yeah. the the the, uh, the seed, the middle inside right, of right. the seed. Yeah. yeah, the black part's just the seed coat. <laughs> yeah, because the... if you swallow that, it probably just go through you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's really it's it's really healthy and and uh, in it because uh, you know we a lot of people eat pumpkin seed, but you know cantaloupe seed, all that stuff is is healthy. Yeah, and so I you know I start to learn about some of that stuff. And talk about it sometime, but uh, we 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 are in a in the process of building a, a horticulture complex at Blankston, mm -hmm. and so uh, I just seen the final pictures of it, and so they're waiting on one more thing, and then they're going to start building this thing, and so uh, we uh, when the rather right, right soon as I got hired, you know, uh, the dean uh, had me to like make a write make a sketch of what you think this ought to be, and. And so, and it's changed a lot, but it, it gave us a vision of what, you know, what we wanted to, have to do. Yeah. And so there is some, still some similarities, but, uh, you know, that's going to be, hopefully, uh, be building that here the next, within this next year. And we're going to be able to have uh, classes and people out there and, and uh, things like that. And so. Uh, Which but, is really exciting. I'm going to interrupt you and brag yeah. a little bit, because it's really exciting that Langston University has invested in this. and. Um, you were, I think, one of their first horticulture-related hires, and then they hired Dr. Tracy Payton, who's also been on our show previously and has a horticulture and entomology background. And then uh, Dr. Joshua Ringer is over there yeah. now with Langston, yeah. and he's got a horticulture. So they're ramping up, which is exciting um, to have another. And we partner really well. I think OSU and Langston has a really good working relationship. Oh, so yeah. um, Definitely. I'm excited for this new complex that's being built and, and what it's going to mean for the the future of the horticulture and the training and, that's going to happen. Yeah, and, and, uh, and, and we work a lot more with a lot of smaller farmers, and so that's where the horticulture is probably going to be the, with the fruits and vegetables and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Uh, you know, and, and uh, Dean Whitaker, um, he was hired, I don't know, maybe a month or two before I was, uh, and he was a new dean there, and when I went there, uh, and talk to him. He says, Mike, I need your resume and I need it. I don't talk about like next month. I need it next week. <laughs> and so <laughs> he was like, we really got to diversify. And so that was exciting. And so, uh, and, uh, so when he got me in there, he was like, okay, Michael, you're my first hire. So, <laughs> <laughs> and so here we go. And so, uh, yeah, we got, uh, Dr. Ringer on, and, uh, and then Dr. Tracy, which I've been knowing Dr. Tracy for a long time. Matter of fact, uh, uh, we had a lady that was, uh, used to come to my conference from Lane, and she would talk about uh, how to pick your produce, take it to take it to the market, because that's what we were trying to trying to help people to grow market gardens, right. gardens to sell. And so uh, she uh, that uh, the Lane Center kind of things kind of went uh, everybody. Uh, kind of went there different ways there. Uh, you know, they, uh, Dr. Scheffler and different ones have different offices in the other towns. But uh, uh, I never, I lost contact with her. And so I was like, okay, Casey, I want you to do this. But I appreciate her honesty. She was like, no, Micah, it would be better for Dr. Tracy to do it. So, so we, uh, we, we had Dr. Tracy to do it. And uh, so she, Casey said she was more of a flower person at, <laughs> yeah. at that time. Yeah. So, uh, we went with, we went in that. That was, it was good. It worked out good. Well, it, it, it did. And I think, I think you've got a great team down there that's being built. So, um, let's talk a little bit. <laughs> I always think about when I've gone and visited your family, uh, Barbara is always like, yeah, go out and pick some okra. But then I end up picking a, like a lot of okra <laughs> three hours later and my arms are all cut up. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about what your personal garden's looking like this year. And is it manageable or? Uh, <laughs> well, you know, I, I, you still recruit I'm, I'm, prob I'm probably running behind 
uh, like a lot of people are, because you know I wound up, I did I wound up with the COVID, and so that that knocked me out for a few weeks. But uh, we have a, we do have garlic growing, and uh, uh, we have a, a, and so I I got to get out there and kind of get things get things going in a hurry. But uh, I we went to uh, we used to go to the southern I used to go to Southern Sog every year, and uh, uh, so I talked Barbara into going one year. And uh, she always said, I don't want to go to your deals and this and that. And so um, I got her to go, and then and then I would be in class, and she was like, look what I found. Look what I, I'm like, <laughs> she was more excited than I was. And, and uh, she went in, they were bidding on different things, and she wound up uh, winning, uh, bidding this garlic. And we had never grew garlic before, and so now ever since then we've been growing garlic. <laughs> <laughs> but it's one of them crops that you plant in October and it goes all the way through the winter. So it's one of them crops that's, you know, it's out there in the garden right now. Yeah, and, and she takes full advantage of everything you guys grow in the garden because uh, I like, if you want to learn how to can, <laughs> go visit Barbara. <laughs> you know, that, that was funny. I love going and seeing your pantry because it's just all canned goods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, uh, when we moved to Piedmont, she didn't know how to can. But, oh really? No, oh. <laughs> but uh, the the lady next door did. Okay. And so you know we out I, we had five acres. They had five acres. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And uh, they had a garden, and, uh, and she showed her. I mean, she was she already she cooked and everything. So, yeah. Uh, uh, she showed her how to can, and then that, that's what she she started doing it, and have been doing it ever since. Yeah. Yeah. So, well. but, yeah. So uh, yeah, Piedmont is a uh, uh, it's. It's been a, a great place for us to, you know, our kids to grow up and uh, and everything. My son, he he's not a gardener, but he still brags on me and stuff, and <laughs> everything. And he he lives in Oregon now. Oh, does he? And he uh he he tells me all the time about the agriculture up there. He he, he wants uh, he said you got to get up here, you got to get up here, because it's it's like Portland is in a valley, uh, between the wa- the ocean and the mountains, uh-huh. and so uh, the soil must be really rich. And so that I guess people have some beautiful gardens. Well, I would imagine their uh, summers are a little more mild than ours too. That probably the plants appreciate. Yeah, and it, it actually it, the the winters are not that cold because of the mountain and the water. It regulates the temperature. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's weird. It's really wild. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you've got some uh, programming coming up. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about your market garden school that you're going to be helping with this year? Yeah, uh, so uh, the last three years we've been we we've been doing the market gardening school and and uh, it's been uh, Dr. Brandenberger. We I've been working with him here at OSU, and he's been a really great person to work with. And so uh, they had been around the state doing it different places, and so uh, we had never been done in Langston. So we've done it at the Langston at our complex, and then uh, the next year we've done it in Tulsa Langston. And then last year we done it in a black community in uh, Wagner, and so uh, what I'm looking at this year is to do it uh, in uh, Bowley. Um, the mayor of Bowley is uh, uh, we've been talking back and forth, and she really wants to do it there. And, and that's w- east of Oklahoma City. Tell us where yeah, Bowley is. Yeah, Bowley is, is okay. east of Oklahoma City. Um, it's uh, before you get to Okima, okay. um, and uh, it would be uh, north. North of Shawnee, okay. yeah, kind of in that area. But if you went out 23rd Street in Oklahoma City, it turns into Highway 62, and it takes you right into Bowling. Oh, okay. You first go through Harrow, um, you go through uh, uh, Peyton, uh, now Prig, now Peyton, now Prig, and then Peyton, and then after you pass Peyton, then you're into Bowling. Yeah, so that's where, and they have a, uh, Bowley was at one time was the largest black town in Oklahoma, um, and so it uh, uh, they still have a big rodeo down there and stuff, and so and they have a pretty nice big city hall, and so uh, what's nice about that is we can kind of get in there socially distance from everybody, yeah, and have have this class, and so we're looking looking forward to that. Um, I think uh, uh, we might be actually splitting. Like this year, I might have to be doing it more by myself because uh, Lynn, I think, is going to be. But since I've been following him for the last three years, I think we can kind of manage that. So, yeah, and, and tell us a little bit about the structure of that class and, and what people would learn going through it. 
they would uh well see we we get into uh you know the beginning of it how what you do to, to begin uh, and so we we go out and, and and actually do a soil test and we actually set it in and have it tested and then we talk about the results of that soil test and then uh you know another class is uh different um uh, vegetables you know the cool season vegetables mm -hmm. You know, we talk about those first, the cabbage, the broccoli, all that kind of stuff. Then we get into the warm season vegetables, how to grow that. And then um, we bring in uh, somebody to talk about uh, fruit, fruit trees, and, and uh, how, to, how to grow those, how to manage them. And then we talk about, uh, um, oh, pests. But, you know, we'll, yeah, those always show up in the yeah. heat of the summertime. And so we'll have Dr. Tracy Payton because she's an... Okay. And how, what's the word? Entomologist. Entomologist, yeah. So she'll come and talk about, uh, you know, how to deal with that. And, and uh, so now the big thing is the integrated pest management mm -hmm. stuff. And so she teaches a, a lot about that. And then we, uh, we have somebody, uh, usually from the NOAA Foundation, talk about wildlife. Because, like, I, where I live, I have cowdies. Yeah. They, they like to eat watermelons. <laughs> a lot of people like, they eat what? Yeah, they, eat, they love them. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they... They eat meat, but they like a little watermelon to go with their meat, I guess. <laughs> they need a little dessert <laughs> afterwards, right? So, yeah, and I, they're really harder on the cantaloupe because I think they're easier to get into and they can smell them. Mm. But uh, they'll eat either one of them. And so, you know, deer, all that kind of stuff, we have somebody talk about that, uh, you know. And, and then at the end, we'll uh, talk about putting in a cover crop. And we actually planted the cover crop in the, at the garden. That we, we will have like a site that's not too far from what we have in the class, that we have a garden and we can actually do hands-on. We'll do part of the class will be actually planting stuff and hands-on and then other part will be inside. Yeah, and it meets once a month, is that correct? And it goes from like around March till the fall. Yeah. And so you're really taking those students through the seasons yeah, um, and yeah. what and to I, be doing when. Last year we started a little later uh, because of the pandemic. And uh, this year, I think, I don't, uh, yeah, normally at the beginning, we were starting in March. I think we'll probably start in, in April this time. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, as we wrap up here, Micah, you got any advice for the new gardener? There's a lot of people that are getting into gardening um, that maybe haven't discovered gardening until more recently. What what would be your advice to them? And uh, Well, uh, you know, everybody is, uh, it's, you got to, kind of get a feel for things. Everybody got to get their own feel. But, you know, the first thing you want to do is get the, uh, get a uh, soil test and, uh, and, and test your soil and make sure, you know, the nutrients are there. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, uh, and I know every, most of all new people, they, they always want to be organic. And uh, it, it's, in my mind, uh, because of the way I grew up, I, I not necessarily that big on organic because I'm like, how does the government know really what organic really is? I mean, I try not to spray anything like, you know, strong or whatever if I can keep from it. But if I do have a pest, I might want to spray something to kill stuff and go ahead and kill it and don't, so it don't come back. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but uh, uh, we, we use the, always use a little chemical fertilizer, but we didn't overdo it. And, it, uh, and I think uh, the key uh, and because it's harder to do organic sometimes if you really need to build this soil up because you either got to bring in a bunch of compost you got to pay somebody to bring in manure or, or you, may, you may need to grow cover crops for two or three years to build it up right. so it takes a long time and but you can take you know if you use some chemical fertilizer you can kind of bring it on up and go ahead and grow and some and most time that's what people want they want to see some results and uh and we we always use use a uh, fertilizer and uh, uh, we didn't overdo it and we had and we and the reason I feel like we then we knew we didn't overdo it because the fish the fish that we caught in our ponds and the worms that we used to dig and if it's not killing the worms which is one of the lowest forms of life then I think I'm good mm -hmm. but you know everybody for each his own <laughs> uh, but, uh, but you got to do what works for you right, right? Yeah. yeah so each person does their own thing. I, I mean, I know there's a couple in uh, out at Oaks, Oklahoma. They're really good at organic, uh, but uh, and a lot of people that I, I run into and they really struggle because the crops don't look as good because they don't they're inefficient. 
not sufficient uh, nutrients. Well, I think I think that's kind of the the challenge and the fun of gardening is, um, you know, you could be my neighbor and we could have completely different environments that we're growing in as far as our soil goes. Mm -hmm. So while we probably have the same climate experience <laughs> there, if we were next door neighbors, the soil's going to be different. But yes. we also know across the state of Oklahoma, our weather can vary dramatically. Um, our temperatures can vary dramatically, and so that all influences. And yeah, you're exactly right. And I mean, even like the first place we had in Piedmont was a lot different from the place that I live in now. Yeah, um, I could grow watermelons a lot easier at the place that, the first place than I can the second place. But I just have to mend it a lot more where yeah. I'm at now. So that's your new challenge, yeah. right? Is to work on that soil. Yeah. So everybody has to kind of grow a year and kind of start getting a feel and then you know it takes you a while and you you learn your soil and your environment uh, but the thing it is is to get out there and start doing it uh you know i was uh <laughs> i'm I, most of my folks family live in tulsa uh -huh. i have one sister who lives here uh and so uh, some of my friends and they come down from tulsa and they see the dirt here in oklahoma city <laughs> and they were like y'all eat food out of that I'm like, well, yeah, that's soil. It's soil. That's red. What is that? <laughs> they're, they're used to the Arkansas River bottom. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's dramatically different as you go east to west and north to south. Mm -hmm. But, well, Micah, thank you so much for coming in and talking with us today. It's been a pleasure. And I know you're, you're chomping at the bit to get back out in the garden um, this season. And I suspect we will be contacting you to come down and see some of those cantaloupe trials that you're doing okay. in Langston to share okay. those with our viewers. So, um, okay. and, and tag one of those watermelon for me, if you don't mind. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, if our viewers can, um, we'll get some of that information. I don't think it's quite out for press yet. The market garden school, No, it's um, not. but we will get that. So, um, when that is available, you can find it on our website. We'll share that with our viewers. Um, or our show calendar will be starting up pretty soon again, too. Yeah, and also we have, we just started a, a Langston Facebook horticulture page, too, or agriculture page, I guess okay. you might say. So we'll be having it on our Facebook page, too. Okay, yeah, and if you do, I mean, Mikey, you've done so much for um, the black community and stuff across our state. And so, you know, I know everybody's appreciative of what you've done. And we look forward to, if you do that uh, presentation again, um, your father's uh, oh. gardening presentation. <laughs> um, would love to share that with people. And I'd highly recommend it um, for anybody to listen. I think it's a great history um, of Oklahoma and kind of the agrarian uh, uh, prog progress, how things have changed since those days. So Yeah, it, you know, it, it, uh, uh, and that, one, one of the other reasons I did that is because we, we, we do a lot, there's a lot of black history programs in February, but there's not a whole lot of agriculture black history. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, 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 there's a missing part. There was a lot of great farmers in my, da my dad's era and uh, it's kind of getting overlooked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's great that you're bringing that back as well. Mm -hmm. So, Micah, thank you for joining us, and uh, we'll see you out in the garden soon. All right, thank you. And thank you to our viewers also for joining us, and we will see you on February 4th for our next podcast. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.